Welcome back. We're going to be starting up unfinished comedy here now with the game of the rich as we arrive in the fortress of Metapede, which was quite, quite a while ago now. But apparently this is connected to the quests we've been doing relating all the way down here with the Institute of Natural Philosophy, the Ordo, with the word that I can't pronounce properly. You know the one, you know the one. So let's speak to Darcy and see how this connects. Hello, sir, and hello to you, cute companion. Dirty Face Darcy at your service. Dirty Face? That's right, just call me Dirty Face Darcy. They used to call me Pretty Face on the outside, but that nickname is gone, apparently. Uh, please just call me Dirty Face instead. Oh, that's just a cool nickname. I wash my face every day. You don't have to stand all the way over there. Uh, where's the action at? Twitter, where'd you learn to talk like that? Don't tell Paimon, don't tell me you've picked up some bad habits. No way, Paimon won't allow it. No, you're not... You're not sounding normal there, Paimon. Uh, too bad it's not time for pancreation yet. Uh, let me think. How about this? Why don't it take you to have some fun? A few folks have locked horns over the chance to go outside. I have no idea those Fontaine Research Institute guys could dish it out like that. I'm guessing they'll be here any minute now. What do you think? Think of it as an opening act before the real pancreation match starts. Uh, Want to check it out? Okay, let's go then. Let's go. Hmm. Unfinished comedy started. Why is it unfinished comedy though? Hmm. I mean, we had unfinished story. So I'm assuming that's the connection there. Hi, Estienne. I brought two new friends with me. Your new friends may have come at a bad time, see that? They're gonna be at it for a while. That's an unscientific way to keeping score. Besides, the participants were unsupervised. Is that any way to produce convincing results? I'm calling for a reassessment. This is a competition, of course. We should have a refined system and fair rules. Participants who don't follow the rules should be disqualified. You talk a good game. I'd expect nothing less from someone who's been through the ringer. If you're referring to the fraudulent thesis case, I've already made my point several times now. The case is still under investigation. It's useless to try and attack my character with something like that. If you say so. After all, you're the only one who knows the truth. Oh, it's Genevieve and Rave again. I'll talk to you about my thing later then. I'm gonna bounce for now. I'll leave my two new friends with you. Darcy makes a dash for it. Why? Where are you going? He left us just like that. Some guide. My man gives him zero stars. Zero. Mr. Guard, as the organizer, it's not exactly proper for you to stay out of this discussion of the rules, is it? <laughs> This is just a game to pass the time. How was I supposed to know you'd all get so riled up over it? Let alone take it this seriously. Right, why don't we introduce the rules of the game to the new players? A game? I'm definitely gonna win. Hm. There's no game the two of us can't win. Uh, wait a sec, we still don't know what the game even is yet. Don't try and change the subject. we have already halfway through the game. And they don't even know the fundamental rules. They can't just join now. So what are you guys playing? Coupon Millionaire. I mean, has never heard of such a game. Of course not. This is just what the heartless guards play to make fun of us. Everyone loses and I'm sure you know who wins. The guards. That's not true. You work to earn coupons during the game. And the one that has the most coupons will get an even better reward from me. So everyone wins, but one person wins more than the rest. A reward better than coupons? What could it be? In Darcy's words, a chance to be under the sun. Some of our periodic checks need to be performed outside, and I get to decide who gets these jobs. It wouldn't be very interesting if I just picked based on my preference. So I created Coupon Millionaire, and those who want to go outside are free to sign up. Whoever gets the most coupons wins the game. If you're feeling that your strength alone will be insufficient, you can find others to group with. As for how you earn coupons, I don't care about that. 
As far as games go, the rules are very vague. It's part of the strategy. Does the Fontaine Research Institute not have a similar game? How about you, Darcy's new friends? Uh, sorry, everyone, but I'm going to win. It's not impossible to come back from behind. But only those who have the means will be able to do it. As for them, SDN, maybe you should arrange a special competition for children. Children's competition? Paimon doesn't know who you are, but you shouldn't underestimate us. We've seen some... things. It's just a game and we're going to cruise through it. No, I will definitely be the biggest winner. Hello? Oh wow, a real child? And a confident one at all. In the fortress of Meripede, though? That's what Cater said, and he's never lied to me. What are you all doing here? You again, SCN? I didn't break any rules, did I? In fact, I even increased everyone's work efficiency, and that should be to my credit. You know what I mean. Know your place, SDN. You're a guard, and you should use your powers to make them obey you. I have my way of doing things, and you... Noels. It's been some time since you arrived here at the fortress. You should try blending in a little more. Laziness. Apathy. I will restore order here. Starting with you. Stop this gathering and go back to what you were doing. I am not as lenient as Estienne. I am going to restore order. Then punishments are a must. I don't think you want to know what they are. Are there things that even I don't know? I jest. You don't need to waste any of your time on this game that we play to kill time. The fortress is huge. I'm sure there are other things that require your attention. I don't need you to remind me. Uh, he leaves. Yes. Finally. Being serious can be a virtue, but being overly serious? It's something else. Anyway, now that the annoying guy has gone, will you join the game, Darcy's new friends? What sort of person leaves their friends behind anyway? We aren't his friends. In fact, Pyman's gonna use his own cool nickname to address him. That pretty face is a jerk. Uh, wait a minute, that nickname doesn't sound all that mean. <laughs> Alright then, what should we call you? Call me Paimon and this is Twitika. As for the game, we'll need more time to think about this. Sure, if you change your mind, please feel free to talk to me. I've changed my mind. I, oh, talk to the little girl. She was around the corner. Again! What are you doing in the Fortress of Metapede? There you are. Oh, you again. And you're, uh... Are you a bird, little one? A bird? Paimon doesn't look like a bird. Indeed, Paimon, you don't. That's so strange. You can fly, but you're not a bird? Are you an evil dragon or an evil dragonling? She's not? Probably? Why did you hesitate? Anyway, he's Twitter and Paimon's name is Paimon. What's your name? I'm... Lanoue? Lanori? Lanori. We'll go with Lanori. Miss Tritka and Miss Paimon, will you please tell me whether the evil sorcerer is still here? The evil sorcerer? Yes, with black clothes and staff that has branches sticking out of it. Kater said that I mustn't get spotted by that sorcerer or things will get very bad. What? Where is this wicked spirit? Bell slinger, my sword is ready. Why are you playing along? Paimon thinks she's talking about who we just saw. Must have been a guard, right? So who is this bad, bad sorcerer? Estienne or Noels? This is sounding very reminiscent to what happened with the Anne story. Where we're playing out a story at this point. Hmm. Estienne is a good sorcerer. He brought me flowers when he returned last time. They had the same colour as my skirt. Then Carter taught me to put them into the books to make pressed flowers. That way my books would smell nice too. Is this what they call the fragrance of knowledge? No ales then. Uh, no plot twists. Boring. Just what kind of story are you looking for anyway? Anyway, the evil sorcerer is gone now. Still, why is a little kid like you in the fortress of Metapede? I've always been here. Why does everyone ask me that? It's so strange. 
You've always been here? Okay. Don't you two have your own home too? Home is where your family is. That's what Carter said too. Or Cater, whatever his name is. Which is why I have a home that I don't know about. How do you call a place that you don't know home? Wait, I can't? Well, that's a toughie. But I'm sure Cater knows the answer. He knows lots of things and a lot of stories. Might Cater by any chance be a kid who looks the same age as you? Nope, he's a lot taller than me. Taller than Mr. Twitter and taller than the evil sorcerer. But I think he's afraid of the evil sorcerer. He lost his sword and the evil sorcerer has a powerful staff. So he hides when the evil sorcerer comes out. Cater sounds mysterious. And maybe Lenore is just too young. She hasn't been very clear about herself at all. Maybe this Cater knows more. I guess we can go meet him. We want to meet Cater. Will you take us to see him? Sure, but it's too soon to go back. I want to explore this place while the evil sorcerer isn't here. Will you come with me? Let's go? <laughs> Let's go. I'm feeling like maybe she's a ghost or something. Go on an adventure with Lenore. Alright. You can sometimes hear bow wow sounds from inside. What? Hmm. Hello, mate. Skylark. Little Skylark, why are you here? So you, you're aware of her as well. It, it isn't just a case of like, only I can see her because of previous quests or anything like that. Punch it. Punch it. Punch it. It's a boxing dummy, so you know. Oh. Hit, hit the punchy bug and I already did it. It's like, that's what I was doing. didn't know this was here. I'll, I'll enable it and see what happens. Pow pow! <laughs> oh, there's a red one over there. What? Ouch! I'm sorry, are you alright? So bright, what happened? It's the evil sorcerer's magic. We'll be trapped if we get caught in it. Sorry, the light's broken and this expert here isn't anywhere near as good as he claimed. I never said such a thing. Oh, it's you. It's all right. You're a good sorceress. But the bright light really hurt my eyes. Yeah, indeed. Wait, that was it? Oh, okay, moving on. Dun, 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 dun. Let's turn you on. Oh, I can't. Why could I turn the other one on, but I can't turn this one on? That's strange in its own way. Where are you? Oh, there you are. What you were following. That we've got to keep nearby, at least. Maybe she'll turn it on? Transforms evil into good. Huh. So, turning off the noise box might cause problems. Listen to the noise box. How? Ah, there we go. Let's get out of here! So what's going on with this one? What was that? Oh. One of those music disc things. Radiant spin crystal. Like what's going on with this one? Are we not? No? Okay. Thought maybe there'd be something going on there, but no. 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 This is quite the adventure. Trying to see if her name is an anagram or something. It could be some hint. Phew. I guess our adventure is almost at an end. The coupon cafeteria is our final stop. So the ultimate destination of adventuring is a good meal. Oh, indeed. I still haven't got those pancakes that I wanted when we did the kitty stuff. I'll get them. I'll get them after I finish my recording session. Yes. Not bad, right? Adventures take a toll on your body, so eating afterward is a must. That's right. And I've never seen someone as small as Miss Paimon. Even smaller than Miss Seasweed. You should eat more, so you can grow big. 
Hmm, the thought of Paimon growing up. Ugh, that gives me a headache. A giant Paimon. And you're probably thinking about something rude right now, aren't you? What? I was thinking something uh, akin to the, um, Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man from, um, Ghostbusters. Uh, let's talk to Bran and see if we can get something good. Yep, be nice. If it was the delicious Tassis Lago, though. Maybe. Greetings, Bran. Great ends, what can I do for you? I'll have 500 free meals. Come in right up. Uh, negative. According to the Fortress of Meripede's coupon cafeteria regulations, only one free meal per day shall be permitted per person. I'm getting some for everyone. Are you seriously trying to feed everyone here? We just need to. Understood. Enjoy. I'll have one too. Understood. Enjoy. Mr. Twitker, Miss Pyman, let's open our meals together, all right? Three, two, four. Wait, what? Wow, mine's Tasses Rago. What did you two get? Oh, it looks lovely. It certainly looks like food. Look at, look, look, look at Twitker's face right there, like, uh... Wow, this looks kind of disgusting. So I got the only good meal. Will there be enough if we split it into three portions? There's even a fortune inside. What do yours say? Paman's fortune says, Luck only brings fleeting pleasure. Lifelong happiness requires hard work. Ugh, now Paman's mad. How about you, Twitker? Things happen. Don't take it personally. Just... Wow. Mine says misfortune is an illness and caring friends are the cure. The two of you went on an adventure with me, so you're definitely caring friends. But you got the disgusting meals. The sorceress said that I must remember to pay it forward. So now it's my turn to cure you. Let's go to the Rag and Bone shop. The Rag and Bone? Huh. See you, Bran. He's a good guy, he is, Bran. He's a good guy. <laughs> so the <laughs> Rag and Bone. Where, 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 is it all the way down here? Like, where, 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 where? Down here, okay. There's a device over there. Punchy, punchy one. Pow, pow. Alright, rag and bone. Hello, Alvod. Hey, Skylark, want uh, Vonta? We just got a new shipment. How about your friends? So, this is the rag and bone shop. If you have coupons, we have everything from home supplies like Hydro Phantasm Taint Be Gone to devices that can help you in the Pancration Ring. Our wares are trusted and loved by all and sundry. You name it, Rack and Bone Shop has it. Hmm. Hmm. We'll take the Hydro Phantasm Taint Be Gone. We don't really need those, do we? We'll take it, Paimon. Well, the special items must be pre-ordered, though. Or if you're lucky enough, you might find what you want on the for sale list. We do have the other stuff stocked at all times, so... Back to my question, how about some Fonta? Mm, I want everything in Uncle Alvord's store. Everything? That's not going to be a problem, let's see. We're almost through with this shipment, and only food and drinks are left, but they'll cost you a good number of coupons. Really? Are you sure it won't be a problem? Problem? If you mean coupons, Kate... Okay. Tuh. It gave me a ton of them, so I should have enough. The food and drinks here are really great, and you're going to love them, Miss Paimon. Kata said that coupons make unfair things fair. Only I got the delicious Tassis Rego at the coupon cafeteria, and that was unfair. So now I'm going to use my coupons to buy something delicious for the two of you. Something doesn't feel right. But Lenore said that there are plenty of delicious food and drinks. As Tien said that hunger and gross food reduce our work efficiency and put us in a bad mood. We're going to see Kato. And we want to in a good mood when we see him. Yes. That's why we need to fill our stomachs with delicious food. I mean, the logic's there. We're counting on you, Uncle Alvard. Okay, I don't, well, how many things do I have? What do I need these for? Marvelous bird egg. A delectable taste that could revive the dead. If you eat it, it can counteract... An entire day's worth of misfortunes. Okay. Quality wooden board. Idle poster. Oh, hello. 
Cute doll, the boar princess, delicious tea leaves. Buy them. Buy them all. Why can't I? Well, it's sold out, but why can't I buy them all? So what can we actually get here? Haggis? No. Doesn't seem to be anything we can get. It's all sold out. Sure, thank you for the business. What business? If Lenore says so, we'll dig in. I'm assuming I bought them all at a previous moment in time. Yep, have a good meal, Miss Pyman. Feasting with Lenore. Everything that couldn't be finished ends up with Pyman. Phew, that was amazing. Pyman's so full she can barely walk. You don't walk, you float. She's getting sleepy too. Why are we here again? Hmm, if you can't remember, then maybe it wasn't important. Paimon remembers now. We're supposed to be looking for Kata. Let's go. But I don't know if he's there. If not, we can wait. He might be back soon. Really not have, no, not, not have any items for me? They're all sold out. All of it. It's all sold out. Even this? Who would be buying that? Oh. Don't forget to come back. Alright, so find Kata. Kata? Kata? It could be Kata. Trying to think, maybe... Looking at it from a different angle in terms of the pronunciation. Is it up? It's up. Okay. So we want to go there. Because... It's over there. Alright, so... Hello. Kato, I'm back! I don't remember this place. Like a library of sorts. Welcome back, Lenore. Looks like you've made some friends. Yes. They're Mr. Twitka and Miss Paimon. Miss Paimon is small and she can fly, but she's not a bird. She's not a scene either. Maybe a small oceanid? You wonder no one has seen anything like her or knows anything about her. Paimon's... Paimon. That's right, Paimon's just Paimon. She's not a Sini or an Oceanid. I mean, you did come out of the ocean. Wait, you're Gator? You look about the same age as Lenore. Nice to meet you, Mr. Twitker, Miss Paimon. Please call me Caterpillar. Oh, it's Cater. Was it Caterpillar? Makes sense, no? Uh, please don't be so formal. That feels so strange. Since you're Lenore's friend, sure, I can do that. Wait a minute. We've heard the name Caterpillar before, haven't we? Maybe from someone in Sumeru? That's right. Julienne. Painter we met at Samudra Coast. Do you remember him? So you're the Caterpillar he mentioned. You've met Julienne? You really went to Sumeru? Oh, how is he? Well, you tell him about your meeting with Julian in Sumeru. According to Julian, his ability to paint everything exactly as he sees it came from you. Did you really give him that power? Is that really what he said? Can't decide if he was exaggerating. Wait, so how was he lying? But the painting he made for Pepper looks so real, even though the color was a bit off. It was an ability he already had. What I did was to give him certainty. The purer the person, the more obvious the effect of such support is. Uh-huh. Well, it did look kind of gullible. Uh, and as for the marvelous bird egg and the tea leaves that activate the imbider's potential, he did spend a lot of coupons to get them, yes. I didn't know that would break his certainty like that. I guess you could say that things turned out for the best, though. Anyway, both you and Lenora are children, right? So is your guardian here? Why are the two of you in a place like this? Catters. Because it'd be Caterpillar. Yeah, so Catter's not a child. Indeed, I'm not. As for my present appearance, you can think of it as an illness of sorts. Oh, huh. So that's how it is. I've been here for a long time. Well, because of what I've done in the past. But it's more complicated for Lenore. She was born here. Okay, but when? Here? Yeah, in the fortress? You're a strange one, Miss Pyman. I've already told you that I've always been here, haven't I? Agnes, her mother, was plagued by a chronic illness and passed away some time ago. I don't stick my nose into other people's lives, so I don't know about their situation. 
but regardless, Lenore wound up with no one to care for her. Aww. It's because I've been here for a long time and Lenore has taken to me, but either way, SDN's asked me to look after her. So that's how it is. But she shouldn't be here, right? Not like she's done anything wrong. You're right. I'm just looking after her for now, and she really should be with her family. Unfortunately, she does indeed have family outside the fortress. So that's what she meant when she said she has a home that she doesn't know about. Yeah, that makes sense. We should be able to reunite with them soon. About that. Things are a little complicated. I'm afraid it won't happen all that soon. How come? Because she doesn't have any proof of identity. Maybe Agnes didn't think of that either. She was the one who would have needed to start the process to send Lenore away from the fortress. How about her other family members? Estienne said that Agnes wrote them in the past, but that she never received a reply and thus stopped trying altogether. Oh no. If they knew about the current situation, they might change their minds. That's why I want to take her to her family. And if they don't want to take her in, well, we'll figure something else out then. Why can't I stay here? Sure, there's an evil sorcerer, but there's a good sorcerer and you're here too. I don't want to leave. Mother never came back after leaving the fortress. If I leave, does that mean I'll never come back? Just like my mother. But I'll never see you again either, Gatter. Agnes left? I don't think Lenore can comprehend what happened. Like, yeah. Ah. Either way, this is no place for a child to grow up. How will a sprout bloom without sunlight? You should get out of this place, Lenore. You've heard all the stories already. It's a real world outside and a family that you are connected to. I'll go with you, so you needn't be afraid. I believe you. You'd never lie to me. But how will you get out of here without proof of identity? Is there anything we can do to help? Is there some loophole or a backdoor we can use? There are options. But they're too risky. How about this, then? Let's follow the rules, albeit not that strictly. Can't we just win that competition? And use that to take it to the surface? And then sort things from there? How will that work? Every so often, Estienne will bring a few people with him to do some work outside. There we go. We use this chance to get Lenore back to her family. She doesn't have any proof of identification to begin with, and the disappearance of someone who never existed on paper isn't exactly going to make news here in the fortress. Not talking about coupon millionaire, are you? Pyramon remembers Estienne saying that whoever gets the most coupons within a time limit will win the chance to go outside. Whoops, our coupons went straight to our stomachs. Ah, and Lenore spent a ton more cleaning the rag and bone shop out. We're sure to lose now. What are we going to do? Oh, that would be it, wouldn't it? Of course. She bought everything. Yeah. Of course it was sold out. We won't lose. If Kata says we'll win, we'll definitely win. Lenore, Paimon suspects you aren't grasping the gravity of the situation at all. Can we get the coupons refunded? We can just say that she's a child who didn't understand the rules. I, I doubt that. Sorry, we'll just have to wait for the next opportunity. It's fine. The coupons I gave to Lenore were for her to use as she pleased. This little mishap won't change the outcome. Paimon still feels kind of bad, though. Why don't we help you? Paimon remembers Estienne saying that you can play the game as a group. Really, Miss Paimon? You and Mr. Twitter will play the game with us? Yep, and we'll win this thing. Together. With us here, this will be a piece of cake. There are four of us, after all. Still... How can we get the most coupons in the least amount of time? I already feel much better knowing that you'll be helping us. Thank you both. As for how to get the coupons, I have a few ideas, but that can wait until tomorrow. You must be exhausted if you don't mind. Why don't you rest up first? There's enough space here. Hmm, good idea. Twitko, if you're tired, why don't we call it an early night? Indeed. Take a break nearby. All right, let's take a break. I'm feeling a little tired. Should we rest now? Yes. Yeah, let's rest. Don't feel like there's anything to ask. Whoa! Kata, what story are you going to tell me today? I've already heard a lot of stories with heroes as the main characters. Today, I'll tell you a story about a little girl, then. A little girl? Can a little girl also be the main character? Of course she can. It's her own story, after all. 
In other stories, she might be a hero herself or an evil dragon. Ah. Uh. Huh? There are all kinds of roles she can play. Long, long ago, there was a little girl who lived in a giant's garden. The giant took special care of the flowers in the garden and wouldn't allow anyone to pluck even a single one of them. To keep intruders out, the giant built a towering wall around it. Because of this, the little girl living in the giant's garden had never set foot outside of it even once. The giant always told her that the world outside was a dangerous place and that the garden was the safest place she could live. And then what? Did the little girl listen to the giant? I bet she didn't. If she did, then the story would end there. You're right. The little girl never was one for doing what she was told. Uh-huh. And as for the rest of the story, we'll save that for next time. Hmm. Next time, you say? Okay. <laughs> wonder what the name of the dragon is. Oh, it seems like we've come at a bad time. Kate has been taken by the evil sorcerer. <laughs> uh, what? If I'm not mistaken, you must be Twitcoat and Pyman. I'll come back to your question in a moment. I consulted the records for the last hundred years, and I couldn't find any record of Caterpillar, night of this possible mislaying of documents. We'll need your cooperation to recreate them. There's nothing pressing about the matter, if you ask me. What's the rush about? Stien, I often get the impression that you couldn't care less about resort doring order to this place. I can't argue with your viewpoint. People who habitually indulge their every whim just can't see that too much freedom actually does them harm. I'll restore order to this chaos using my own methods. I'll advise you again not to stand in the way of my work. Chaos? Isn't that just another word for thinking on your feet? Ah, uh, you know, I forget it. Is Caterpillar your real name? Additionally, I'll need you to state your crime in as much detail as possible. Caterpillar is not going to be your real name. Like, no. In time, location. As well as the final sentence pronounced. The more details you provide, the greater the likelihood we'll have of retrieving your records. If your file was indeed lost, we can fill in a portion of your records based on your statement. I've been called Caterpillar for as long as I can remember. I think this name suits me best, and it's the closest thing I have to a real name. Real name Caterpillar. Confirmed to be correct. Next, state your crime. I carried out a certain task under my master's orders. I failed, but some people suffered because of it nonetheless. This was my crime. Your master. I'll need their full name. Also, when did this occur? Unlike me, he has many names, and this happened a long time ago. Are you messing with me? Everything I've said is to the truth. His voice sounds too low to be that of a child. I apologize. Were you looking for a more dramatic account? Or for some more lurid details to ignite your imagination? As for what happened that day, I could recount it sparing no detail. From the furnishings of the clandestine hall, the hall you say, to the thoughts of my companion which I ventured to speculate on. But that's all just a fabrication of the mind made after the fact. We both know that's not what you're really after. For these are nothing more than stories masquerading as the truth. The real story has already turned to smoke along with that barren garden. What you want to know is a purer truth. The truth is that the corporate is where he should be. The other minutia and trivialities are of no significance to you. They're inconsequential and thus won't shake up your order in the slightest. Oh my. There's nothing here for you to trouble yourself with. Everything is as it should be. Huh. The culprit is where he should be. There's nothing here for me to trouble myself with. Everything is as it should be. Compared to the temporarily missing file, surely the misuse of Rochelle loudspeaker is a more obvious problem. Apart from the unauthorized use. We've also received a number of complaints recently of nervous breakdowns caused by its repeated use. Oh my. You're right, Estienne. The guards have an even greater duty to put a stop to this sort of rule-breaking. We should investigate the matter immediately. What are you waiting for, then? Let's get this show on the road. That's odd. Why did he flip at the drop of a hat? There's something fishy about this. Like, yeah... Doesn't seem like the type to back down. Could it have something to do with that stuff Caterpillar said? 
Papa just felt a little sleepy when she heard it. Let's just ask him directly. Yes, Caterpillar, what's going on with you? Sorry for the delay. About the way I said I got the coupons earlier. What did you do to him? Someone that aggressive doesn't seem like the type to take advice from anyone. Why would he give up so easily? Just a few small tricks. The culprit is where he should be. This is an undeniable fact. Making someone as straightforward as him certain of an undeniable fact isn't exactly hard. Like that time with Julienne? That's right, just like that time with Julienne. I've been here for a long time, as you know. After staying in one place for a long time, it's only natural to pick up a few handy tricks to exert some degree of influence over your environment. Sounds a little suspicious, mate. Changing a stubborn person's mind with just a few simple phrases almost sounds like magic or hypnotism in some regard. Could there have been times when we were also influenced by magic without even knowing it? Hmm. Would someone even realize that they're being influenced? Iman was already a bit sleepy, but now her head is totally spinning. It's not as simple as it looks. There are always limits to the application of tricks like these, and the results aren't always what you'd hope for. It's like with Julian. He always had a knack for art, but he lacked confidence because of his visual impairment. The certainty that he could draw well was inside him to begin with. But in other cases, the concept of certainty is just too abstract, making it difficult to predict the outcome. Uh-huh. So I did take a chance this time. I just thought that if he held us up here, it would keep delaying the plan to get Lenore out of the fortress. Besides, I doubt you wanted to be questioned by him repeatedly, either. Uh, well, you've got to take chances to achieve your goals. You're absolutely right. Back to the matter at hand. If you've changed your mind and want to back out, I understand completely. Lenore might be sad for a time, though. For her, playmates like you are hard to come by. Mm, we've already made a promise to her, so we can't just go back on our word now, right? A promise is a promise, but it doesn't mean I trust you. Of course, knowing that our goals are aligned for the time being is enough. Speaking of which, where is she? She went on an adventure early this morning. Probably to rehearse for what's to come after she leaves this place. Aww. It's just as well. I have a few headaches to go take care of soon. Like what? Well, like what? You can usually get a reward for helping others, including the guards. Take care of some headaches. Oh, we totally get that. Sounds like some of the Adventurers Guild's commissions. I see. Would you two join me on the next commission, then? Sure. Where are we going? The abandoned production zone in the lower levels. Oh. So it's... Oh, I was going to say, like, that, is that it? Because it seems like it's it, but... Is that a coupon quest, then? Like, is that is that connected to the game? Of the rich? Because it feels like it is. Because, yeah, we get 280 for that. Yeah. Cause that That's that's going to be connected to it. So what, what we'll do, then, is we'll end this part here. And then we'll see about safe operation in the next part. So we'll see you over in the abandoned production zone in the next part. Ta-da for now.